Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining today's EAC webinar. This is Cassie Stumo. I am the Marketing Specialist at EAC. We will begin today's session with an introduction of EAC, and then uh, Matt Kloos, our Senior uh, Technical Account Manager, will be uh, talking to us today about digital transformation uh, through the Bill of Materials. Um, this session is being recorded, and a replay will be sent to everyone after it's over you know, unless there are any pending um, technical difficulties. So please feel free to drop questions in the chat as we go, um, and then we will answer them uh, after the presentation. So for those of you who do not know who we are, um, I'll start off with a quick intro uh, to EAC. Our mission is to transform the way companies design, manufacture, connect to, and service their products. We are a solutions provider for PTC, offering our customers uh, products such as service lifecycle management software, uh, which helps you create and manage uh, service documentation, uh, product data management software like Windchill and ThingWorks Navigate, uh, which helps you uh, manage internal product data, and we implement the Internet of Things and augmented reality into business strategies. Um, we assist with design and engineering projects, and we offer training courses and webinars uh, for continuous learning. Um, we are also a commercial uh, reseller for Formlabs 3D printers, um, so we really have a variety of tools to help your organization save time and money. So please keep us in mind um, when it comes to your product development needs. Um, today, though, we are focusing on uh, how disconnected product info can present some major problems in uh, efficiencies in the workplace, uh, such as increased design costs, delayed schedules, uh, and poor decision making, and how transforming your processes into a digital platform can really help you overcome those operational inefficiencies. So with that, I will pass things along to uh, Mr. Kloos, to give you a more in-depth uh, look at the digital transformation uh, through the bomb. Yeah, so everyone, thank you very much for, for spending some time with us uh, on this Friday. Uh, I know the, the weekend is coming and I think this is probably right before lunch for, for quite a few of you. So again, thank you for, for spending some time with us. So what we're going over today is digital transformation through the bill material. So bomb transformation. This is a really interesting topic um, and it's a topic that a lot of times, you know, we, we've identified as areas of, of maturity gaps with the organizations that we work with. And I'll talk about that. So, so getting started, you know, I, I think <laughs> it's kind of a, uh, it, it's kind of a, a humorous phrase, but the world is changing, right? That, that always can be said. But if you really think about the products that you touch on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, the things that you work with, whether it's a cell phone, a car, a coffee maker, or a refrigerator, it, the the digital content in those products has increased tenfold over the last decade and the really interesting part the really exciting part is over the next 10 years we're going to see a whole new generation of smart connected products so those products are going to have things like sensors onboard software cloud-based software the whole goal of that though is to improve the customer experience Another goal coming out of this that has been realized by a number of companies that we work with is the opportunity for new business models. So, for example, you know, if you think of the aviation industry, if anyone's familiar with the term power by the hour, the opportunity to sell uh, aircraft engines, not by just selling the engine, but by selling the uptime by the hour that it's operating, by being able to monitor and be connected to that design constantly, it affords that organization or, or, or that uh, manufacturer the opportunity to do that. So as we start to think about things like smart connected products, smart manufacturing, augmented reality or virtual reality, as well as connected service and maintenance, it becomes very obvious that a lot of the organizations that we work with, and even our organization as a whole, needs to rethink how we all approach product development. So along those lines of smart connected products, operations, and that sort of thing, I think it goes without saying that these products are becoming more complex. Um, my background is mechanical engineering. Um, I, the whole reason I went into engineering was, was cars, automotive industry. That's 
really my passion and what drives me. One of the interesting statistics I heard recently was that the Ford GT, a supercar that came out in the last couple of years, runs about 10 million lines of code. So think about that for a second. That's a lot of code just for a car, right? The really interesting thing about that statistic is that that is more lines of code than a Boeing 787 Dreamliner. So let that sink in for a second. So this car has, you know, is processing and runs more lines of code than a very large airplane. That's, that's crazy when you start to think about that. But it's more and more consistent that that's the direction products are, are, are heading. The other, the other interesting component about that is it does not even include things like the cloud-based backend support, data acquisition, as well as data processing systems that all of these new designs are going to have by being constantly connected. So again, there's a lot of data going on and there's a lot of complexity to these, to these designs. Because of that, organizations have to evolve the way they create, manage, and share product information. All this information needs to be readily accessible and it needs to be collaborative in where it's created and how it's created. One of the things EAC does, um, we're a learn first organization. Um, we try to get to know um, our partners and our customers so that we can make proper suggestions. One of the ways that we do that is through assessments. And what we do with an assessment is we come on site and we get to know more about your organization. And one of the things that we learn over and over again with these assessments is that everybody is busy. Everyone talks about how they don't have time to accomplish what they need to. They, they need more time, they need, need more bandwidth. It's very consistent. So guess what? As products become more complex and as new markets are tapped, that, pro that problem is just going to get worse and worse. All right, so part of trying to improve that or trying to fix that issue is this idea of digital engineering. So again, my background being mechanical engineering, you think mechanical design, pretty you know, straightforward, more or less. But the reality is even the most basic mechanical designs that we interface with, interface with on a daily basis is more of an electromechanical design now than it's ever been. So it's this idea that moving forward, it's this really exciting situation for engineering where you have mechanical, electronic, electrical, as well as software engineers all working together to create these products, right? What's going to happen is there's going to have to be better integration between these individuals and an organization or these groups inside of an organization. Right now, a lot of the organizations that we work with have a very siloed effect when it comes to electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, and, and tossing things over the wall, so to speak. It's going to be the organizations that can tie these different groups together through product development that are going to succeed. One of the comments I've heard in a couple presentations now is the idea of survival of the digital fittest. Those are going to be the organizations that survive and thrive going forward in this connected universe. All right, so, you know, that's a lot to take in, right? And, and, and you might have a connected strategy, you might not. You might have products that you divine, define and develop that have, that lead themselves to be connected, you might not. But what ends up happening is when we start talking about this digital engineering concept, it becomes very daunting. How do I integrate all these things together? How do we tie things together? One of the nice things PTC has done is created this digital engineering journey. Pretty straightforward. You've got a starting point, which is today, where your company resides. And then you've got these different bands. You've got an understand band, advance, as well as outperform. And really, this is the journey that you can take depending on what your overall end goal is. So as far as the bands, understand is really basic digital hygiene. It's using best practices to understand, organize, as well as make use of digital data. The th interesting thing about this understand band is that most of that data is something that you already have. And it's the thing that we're gonna focus on the most during this presentation today. I can't tell you how many times through assessments and other engagements with customers, I hear the same thing. We have lots of data, we don't know what to do with it. And it's a problem that we at EAC even have sometimes as well. So understand that band is very important. The next band being advanced is where new innovative products are designed around the concept or idea of connectivity. So you can optimize that design and you can take that data and use it to drive new engineering processes and ultimately new products. 
The next step, outperform. This is where a manufacturer has the ability to stay in constant contact with its assets in the field. So the idea of a digital twin, where you have your digital design, as well as a real world design with sensors pushing information back, having that information drive that digital design for new iterations or even a new generation of designs. This is extremely powerful stuff. It's not necessarily where your organization might wanna to go today, but it's, it could be a goal long-term or it could be even you know, a, a new business model. You know, going back to that idea of power by the hour, you could start looking at business in a whole new light by taking this digital engineering journey to that outperform level. All right, so getting your digital life in order, right? So we start referring back to that, that to understand thing, right? That, that first step. It's never been more important to get the digital information together. And the way that's done is through a proper PLM strategy and system. In this case, what we're gonna be talking about today is windshield. But trying to get that information so that you have one area for your digital product definition is extremely important. Having that representation as well as a single source of truth. A lot of organizations have a lot of disparate systems where they store information. Getting all that information in one area is extremely important if you want different areas of engineering as well as enterprise to start working together. So one of the things that we often do to start customers thinking along the lines of how to, how to tie things together, how to get that one source of truth, we often ask questions. Um, some of the questions we ask, how many enterprise systems do you have? Are you able to easily compare the data from one system to another to ensure its consistency and accuracy? And then finally, do you find that people inside of your organization are duplicating work or spending a lot of time searching for information because it's not easily accessible? The unfortunate part is when we ask those questions, oftentimes, yes, we have a lot of different systems in the organization. No, we don't have a way to compare product data across the different systems and determine its con consistency and accuracy. And worse yet, we do spend a lot of time searching for data or duplicating work simply because we can't find it. That's why that digital hygiene component of this is so very important and it ties into that bond transformation that we're talking about today. All right, so the, you know, in looking at the attendees um, to this, this webinar, it looked like a lot of people have a lot of experience in engineering, you know, and that's steps to be expected. But, you know, really when we start talking about what defines your product, from an engineering perspective, we often look at it as, well, it's, it's parts, it's sub-assemblies, it's components, it's, it's that sort of thing. But the reality is there's so much more that defines your product. There's functions, there's things like data from sensors and electronics, if you're at that point. But more importantly, more commonly, specifications, parts, product characteristics, also information from teams, partners, and suppliers. All of these things define your product. Where do they, de where do they reside right now, right? I mean, think about all the data and all the sources that all that information resides in. And, and it's enough to make your head spin most, most times with organizations we work with. The other thing to think about with that is, how do you access that content? So when you start thinking about all this information that, that, that drives your design, who accesses it, when do they access it, and how do they access it? Those questions alone keep a lot of the higher level people that we work with in organizations up at night, because there's a lot of time wasted, and there's a lot of error around the who, when, and how of how people access content. So if we were to focus specifically on the bill material right now, when we look at a bill material, again, everyone has their own definition for what a bill is, but the reality is it's a recipe for how that product is made. And when you start thinking about that recipe, that bill material, that's just more data, and that's the definition of your product. If you look at your organization, you could have any number of bill material to define a specific product. You could have a design bill, planning, manufacturing service, could even have a support bill material. And even more daunting is the idea that you have a different bill material for unique configurations of the same product. Now you've got a lot of different things defining a product that you need to rein in and tie together. 
So another comp important component to this is understanding who interacts with the product. Again, I know there's a lot of people based in engineering on this call. So even if we just look at who interacts with your product on the engineering side, that's a lot of people. It could be, right? There's a lot of different types of engineers. There's a lot of different engineering responsibilities that need to get data or that makeup of a product. But now as we start to look enterprise level, think about all the different areas of an organization that need to touch information or need information to be included in the recipe of that design. Manufacturing, management, service, procurement, sourcing, sales, it just doesn't stop. The interesting part is when we have our assessments, oftentimes we ask people, you know, whether it's marketing or sales, you know, do you need the data from a design? And oftentimes they say, no, no, I don't really need that. But then they come to find out they're asking engineering three, four, five times a week for information that if they were just granted access to it or it was placed in an area that was easy to find, they wouldn't be stopping engineering from doing what they're supposed to do in the first place. All right, so in talking about, you know, we talked about who interacts with it and also what makes up a product. Let's talk a little bit specifically around bills of material and some things that we often see. So common practices, probably the most common practice that we run into, whether we're talking assessments or just conversations with customers, most customers are dealing with having a drawing centric bill material. This means that the bill material resides on the drawing and that's where it is. And if anyone needs that information, they need to go to the drawing to get it. So this concept or idea is based, you know, if we want to trace all the way back to the drawing boards, right? So when you actually be on a drawing board and draw these designs out, you have your bill of material there and that's what people would use. It's come a long way since then. You know, if you're using 3D CAD, there's some automation to that bill of material generation. But overall, it's still a significant bottleneck in a lot of the organizations we work with. There's really three phases when we start talking about drawing centric bill material. There's a composition phase, which is where you actually create the bill material and you create the parts that make up that bill material in CAD. You then review that information. You know, and no matter how much automation you leverage from these CAD systems, there's always a review of that bill of material on the drawing. Because guess what? There's not, not the filtering tools inside of CAD aren't the best. There's content and information that needs to be included in the bill that just isn't capable of, of using the CAD system to do so. There's a number of different reasons, but that review does take place. And then finally, there's decomposition of that information. So what ends up happening is if people need to use that bill of material, they go to that drawing, they get the information, and they decompose it into the content they need to get their job done. This could be things like purchasing, could be sales, most of the time it's manufacturing, but that's the idea here. So that's that can be problematic. You know, one of the, some of the main problems that come to mind, you can't release information until the drawings are done. Now that's a significant bottleneck and a significant amount of stress that's placed on engineering. Even though you might know the structure of that design before a single CAD part is created, you can't communicate that until that CAD model is created and that drawing's made. Another interesting issue is if there's changes that are applied to the design, it could be something like a material spec, part number, quantity, those types of things, you now force the drawing to be revised. And anyone that knows your product development process knows that, you know, with change, you know, whether it's a change notice, change request, or what have you, having a drawing revision just to change a single item in a bill of material, there's a lot of overhead that's involved with that. So again, wasted time. And, and, and there's some significant issues tied to this. I want you to understand though, if you do have your drawings, if you, your drawings do house your bill material, you're not alone. Again, most of the organizations we work with are still at this point. Another common practice that we see oftentimes is using multiple systems and bills of material um, that reside in those systems. So this is not to say that you can't have a bill of material and let's say a PLM system and an ERP system. You can. But the ideal situation is that the process of pushing that bill is automated. It's not a manual process. What this common practice is talking about is the idea that a bill material resides in these systems and it's manually manipulated or updated. And this happens quite a bit. Sometimes it's an organization that's grown. Sometimes it's an organization that's had acquisitions in different business units. And that's why the bill resides in different systems. 
But again, the idea here is that those bills reside in those systems, but it's largely a manual process to update and manipulate the bills in those individual systems. I don't think I need to go into too much detail of why that's problematic. There's a lot of time wasted making sure these bills and material are accurate in full and all the systems there's a lot of error that's involved as well because you're still relying on a manual process to make sure the bill is correct it could be an email it could be a spreadsheet that gets sent out it could be something that's automatically dumped from one system to another in terms of an xml file or that sort of thing but guess what even those types of files still have manual manipulation with most of the organizations we work with so again this is a common practice we see as well now those are two things that, that people are doing often, well, organizations are doing often. One of the most common mistakes when we start talking about bomb transformation and tying more information to the bill material is that people hear what can be done and they take these initiatives as a giant overhaul. They want to accomplish everything at one time. They want to have a digital bill of material and a PLM. They want to tie all their product information to that bill of material. They want to have change management levied against those bills of material in this system. They want to take on options and variants. They want to take on visualization. They, all these different items that can be done in Windchill, no problem. But the problem is, if you try to try, try to tackle everything at one time, you stall out. You stall out because of resources. You stall out because of budget. You stall out because of adoption. So the way that we like to look at bomb transformation is more along the lines of a more agile way, smaller value-driven steps as opposed to this big bang. Right? And that's really what we're trying to do here. So best practices. This slide is quite a bit of a misnomer. And why is it a misnomer? Simply because best practices, it's, it's a little bit of a stretch to try to apply a best practice to every organization. If I was to sit here and say, you know, all the companies that are on this, on this webinar right now, this is the way you should do something. It's not taking into account the unique processes and the unique structure that you have as an organization. So that's why we're a learn first organization. That's why we take time to get to know the customer through assessments and other things. That being said, there are some, there usually is some commonality between what we recommend. First off, this idea of digitally integrating into one PLM system, having all of your pertinent design information in one area so that it's easily accessible by all stakeholders in the organization and it's accurate. You don't have to worry about information residing in two different areas and having two different iterations of it. That's important. The other a component of this that's very important, take it one step at a time. As I just mentioned, do not try to boil the ocean try to come up with individual steps and phases that make sense. It could be a situation where you have your bill of material on drawings right now. That first phase might be just getting that bill of material off the drawing and into a PLM system like Windchill. That's a significant culture change inside of an organization. But once you accomplish that, it makes a lot of the other downstream items much easier to Finally, this kind of goes as a little bit of juxtaposition of what I just mentioned, but treat this as an enterprise initiative. Again, a lot of people from engineering on this call, but what we need to do is we need to look at the overall grand scheme of things. What's your overall goal? What's the company's overall goal? Not just engineering, not just procurement, not just manufacturing. Look at this as an enterprise initiative that's going to benefit the whole organization, not just one area of it. All right, so when we start talking about this digital journey, we start talking about bomb transformation. There's a number of different places that you can start your journey. We are gonna focus on bomb structure just because that's the area that we're deciding to focus on today. But there's other areas that tie into bomb transformation that also benefit a number of organizations and might be the area that your organization needs to start. Change management. We see a lot of maturity gaps around change management inside of organizations and being able to use a system where all of your data resides to tie all the data necessary for change management and automate it so that the approvals are very easy and straightforward, regardless of the area of the organization you reside in. That's oftentimes a starting point for organizations. Another starting point, parts classification. This goes right into the idea of that bill of material structure. Being able to classify parts, not only by their, their name and part number, but also by function 
or physical characteristics. That's a key component into reuse and structuring bills of material. Supplier management. You know, suppliers oftentimes need the information from the bill, but oftentimes they're also contributing information to that bill of material. So that can be an area that organizations choose to start with. Also, enterprise collaboration. Um, this, this oftentimes, I don't say this is a great starting point because to try to get a whole enterprise to bite off on doing something is difficult because everyone has their own initiatives and motives. But it is something that sometimes organizations identify as their place to start. So if we were to start with bond structure, right? Think about your bill material. An effective bill material structure allows users to enter all parts and in product information in an easy to read and understand format. The information that resides in a bill material can come from a number of different sources. That is a big thing that people um, sometimes have a hard time understanding. It's not just parts, it's not just subsets. It can be spec sheets, it can be uh, requirements, it could be analysis results, it could be testing data. All of those things can tie into the individual line items in a bill of material so that it's easily accessible. If you ask someone to go find the requirements for an individual part in one of your designs, do they know where to look? Do they know what system to look in? Even if you're using PLM, oftentimes because people don't structure this as part of their bill of material, they know it's in a folder somewhere and now they got to run a long search to try to find it. By being able to structure all of this information in a bill of material, it is a change in mentality, but what it affords companies the opportunity to do is find things very quickly and easily. So th that information could be MCAD data, could be ECAD, could be other documents. But what you're trying to do is eliminate the issue of having siloed information. By doing that, you reduce scrap and waste, and most importantly, you eliminate the time spent with rework redundancy, and trying to search for information. All right, so that's a little bit about bomb transformation. Now, if we start to look at the individual customers um, and success stories that people have had. So these are the individual um, digital engineering journeys that companies have had, uh, specifically around bomb structure and bomb transformation. So the first customer we're going to look at is iRobot. So you can see here, what they started with was basic PLM and bomb setup. You know, this is, this is pretty common that we see customers start here. And you can see through this process because they had an overall goal. They've worked all the way through these different items and being able to have an ECAD bomb tied to this and getting to the point where they can use their bill of material because it's not just CAD data. They can use that bill of material for forecasting. That's interesting, isn't it? You know, this idea of you know, your bill material, everyone thinks bill material, they think engineering, but now forecasting, we're talking sales, we're talking procurement, we're talking a number of different areas of the organization. What they were able to do, they being iRobot, was take a quote process from weeks and turn it into minutes. Now, there were a lot of steps along the way, as you can see, but think about that. If you're able to do that, that's, that's a huge impact, as well as, of course, having that one source of truth and the reduced cost and the streamlined nature that that provides. Another example is Lifetime. So you can see this is a customer that started with CAD data management, uh, also started with new product introduction management, and then started getting into the structure and transformation of bill material, taking that bill material off of the drawing and putting it into a PLM system, in this case, Windchill. One of the key components for Lifetime was taking that engineering bill material and transforming it into a a manufacturing bill of material. That's what a lot of customers are very interested in because right now, if you're doing this, it's probably a very manual process. It takes a lot of time and effort to do. By leveraging Windchill and the functionality that's afforded there, it's very easy to group things differently, add components, add content, even add things like, like machine code uh, to those individual parts and subassemblies. So, Essentially, what were they able to do? Faster time to market. Everyone wants that, right? Everyone wants that. Improved quality, everyone wants that as well. So most importantly, less engineering time required, right? That's, that's a key. A lot of times, because of the way organizations are structured, people outside of engineering point to engineering and point at it and say it's a, it's a bottleneck. Right, let's, open, let's open that up. Let's, let's make it so that engineering isn't the bottleneck. 
Stratex. So this is uh, automotive industry, again, my favorite, but just one more example here. And the key components here, uh, Stratex, no different. What they ended up doing was uh, they used, um, they added parts and bombs as well as, you know, tying related documents into that bill of material. So this process, this whole system that they created, their annual return of an on investment took less than a year, right? So that's that's extremely important as well. When you start thinking about where's the money, when do you get it back? Less than a year, that's a that's that's an important milestone. But probably more importantly than your return on investment, you start looking at this comment that was made. With Windchill, they're able to turn around product designs in six to nine months where it would have taken 15 before. So half, right? Think about if you could take your product design time and half it. Think about what that opens up from an organization. You can get more lean or what you can do and what we recommend organizations do, start taking on more projects. Start looking at different areas of, of, of business. You know, this is it's extremely powerful stuff to be able to half that design time all by tying information into the bill material and giving access to that bill of all the key stakeholders in the organization. All right, so if we start talking about the idea of a PTC's bomb solution, you know, if, if you don't take anything else out of this presentation when it comes to PTC bomb solutions inside of Windchill, just remember these three words, complete, accurate, and reliable. So it's complete because what bomb structure inside of Winchell allows you to do is manage a full product definition. It's not just CAD data again, it's, it's uh, requirements, it's testing data, it could be any number of content and information, it could even be sensor data from the real world. It's accurate because it's one source of truth. Instead of things being siloed in different areas, it's all in one area. All those different types of information reside in one area inside of that bill material structure. And then finally, it's reliable because you have the confidence of all these people inside of the organization, key stakeholders, going to that one area for the data and also importantly, pushing their data into that one area. The reliability goes up because there's no longer this need to take information from one system and just copy it or push it into another system. All right, so you know, if we start looking at, at windshield as a whole and we start looking at all the different areas of windshield that can impact bomb transformation, there's a lot. You know, this is, this is kind of an eye chart for all the different capabilities that windshield offers that ultimately tie back into bomb transformation. You know, there's bomb structure, there's multi-cad data management to generate that initial bomb, advanced search capabilities, the ability to generate options and variants supplier and manufacturer parts, bomb reporting and analytics, there's no limit. This is why it's extremely important as you start looking to transform your bill material and how you handle it. Not only is the software important, but the people that you partner with are important as well. You have to have someone that can not only understand where you are at in this organization, but also truly understand your goals and initiatives and tie this back to the solutions that PTC offers. We can show software and we can show demonstrations until we're blue in the face, but it doesn't really do anything unless it relates to the initiatives and goals that your organization has. And that is something that EAC is really good at doing, being able to tie in what your goals are to the solutions as they reside inside of Windshield. So from a sum summary perspective, I, you know, this is kind of a, sl a slide that makes me smile because if you look at it, you got the, the before and the after. Of course, everything's terrible before and everything's great after, but it's true. When you start looking at the way that most companies structure their bill of material or, or the way that they house information in different silos, there's a lot of design costs that are increased because of that, delays and schedules, obstructive decisions because people can't get to the information they need. And by adopting a PLM system like Windchill and starting to structure your bill of material so that it's more than just CAD, you now get to associate all the data and information. You get to decrease development time, decrease cost, and hopefully improve quality. Because again, everyone's working off that same database. Everyone's working off the same area of information that's hopefully consistent and correct. All right, so where should we get started? That's a really good question. I think the best place to start 
is to contact EAC and, and ask us, you know, how can you help? We can set up an assessment. We can set up just a quick meeting to discuss what your initiatives and goals are. Because again, we can come in and talk product. And we can talk solutions. We're very good at that. But we, what we would rather understand is what are your goals and initiatives? Or do you need help defining your goals and initiatives of where you want to go? We can help with all that. And only then can we pair this to solutions. You know? So from a bomb transformation perspective, it might just be getting that bill of material off of a drawing and into windshield. It could be something more advanced like analytics based off of a bill, or it could be something like a quoting process um, based on that information. It could be any number of things, but we really need to understand what your organization is and where it wants to go to be able to make proper recommendations. So that concludes what we wanted to talk about today, digital transformation through the bill of material. Hopefully you found this useful, uh, interesting, and uh, what we can do now is we can go ahead and open it up to any questions that might have popped in the queue. Thank you so much, uh, Matt, for the presentation. Um, we do not have any questions as of now, so we will wrap it up. Um, so thank you uh, so much for joining us on today's webinar on digital transformation through the bomb. Um, you'll be receiving a replay of the webinar shortly. Um, please reach out to us if you have any questions. Um, like Matt said, we are here for you um, for whatever your needs are. So, and watch out for future webinars to um, which you can find on uh, eacpds.com uh, forward slash events. So have a great rest of your day, everyone.